Right, John. How are you? How is it? You weren't carting today, but is it getting stronger? <laughs> that, your arm I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of that going on. Uh, it, it feels better as the days go by, to be honest. When I, I uh, hit that boulder in the Lake District five, five weeks ago, and, uh, you know, I know I'm a fat kid, but uh, I was never going to move a 60 million year old rock that had been there since dinosaurs were walking around. I just straight into it, and I was laid on the floor, and uh, I couldn't breathe. I just thought, it's the end of my season completely, and, uh, you know, the only thing I was screaming at myself was I was going to miss the TT and, you know, this great event and, uh, you know, I was in a bad, bad way, you know, I had a couple of weeks, couldn't really sleep and I was shitting blood and I was in a bit of a mess, to be honest, and uh, it's only the last couple of weeks, really, or maybe this last week where I have the motivation to come back and, uh, you know, seeing the boys today tearing around on the carts, I was so jealous, it looked like they were having a great time, uh, you know, these boys, it was just... But now, enthusiasm's back, you know, the, the cast come off yesterday, it was four weeks, the cast on since the operation, and, uh, you know, I've got a couple of screws in there, grit's coming back, just need a, a little bit more range and uh, grit my teeth and be a proper hard northerner and hopefully I'll be on the grid. Are you going to any other, are you having a hyperbaric chamber or doing any of the other voodoo-y stuff, or are you just letting it heal on its own? Well, I don't, I don't know, I've been told about this, these amazing hyperbaric chambers and things like that, but I just think it's a load of bollocks, to be fair, I think, <laughs> sat... <laughs> Sat in a chamber breathing oxygen is not, I think Mother Nature will take over and, you know, and I'll have to, I'm a bit old school and, you know, it'll fix, I'm sure. I was chatting with a lad who was actually out with you riding, he said it looked, uh, it looked a horrendous crash, he said he thought it was going to be worse than a broken wrist. <laughs> it felt like it. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, I've had a lot of tumbles at short circuit level and, you know, I broke my leg, I broke bones in my feet and collarbones and bits and pieces and I broke my left scaphoid in 98, but... This was by far the worst crash I've ever had. I, I bumped uh, my testicles, I bumped my left and right elbows on my leg, I shattered my knee brace in half, I cracked my helmet in half. I, was, I thought I broke my jaw, which would definitely be a good thing because I try and lose a bit of weight <laughs> with that. Uh, and uh, like I say, I don't know, I just went from 30 mile an hour to nothing and I was stressing a little bit. I couldn't breathe and I thought I'd done some damage to my lungs and, you know, you know big old fella like myself going from 30 mile an hour to nothing, it was uh, not a nice experience and it wasn't, it was pretty stressful for a while but uh, you know, I'm repairing, you know, we're still uh, six weeks before TT. So. Shows the friendship as well, I believe you were the first one to text to see how he was doing, is that right? It was. No. <laughs> <laughs> I read that wrong. Don't, uh, I did a, a, a the worst thing, I, I wanted to text someone in. I thought it'd be laughing at him. I thought he'd maybe think uh, that that kid thinks that uh, I'm out of the TT, I'll get to <laughs> get the sort of bike race easier. But no, uh, you know, it's, it's not great to see John, I guess, here, you know. And uh, I think he, he'd be back strong as ever, you know. He knows where he's going around the TT. And uh, I just want to see him back on the big bike and see what happens. How's, how's the new bike, Michael? Have you been doing some testing with BSB, the BSB boys? And are you racing at Brands Arch next week? Yeah, I'm going down with the the superstars of BSB road racing and uh, get the sunglasses out and a bit of hair gel and <laughs> t talk about them. I'll tell you what, you're going to fit right in, no problem. That, that's what I was going to say and uh, I got a bit of a debrief, I'm not allowed to say certain words when I'm up here but uh, I'm going to take <laughs> go down and have a sausage fest as you would call it and uh, that'll be a bit of fun. You'll have to borrow the big motorhome maybe, can you lend, borrow your motorhome John? Mm, yeah, it's about five grand a weekend for a motorhome like mine. You fancy that? B BMW will pay for that. Oh, got that's to say, uh, the wages I'm getting, that's, that's nothing, John. <laughs> <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell he's arrived. I was in Ireland last week. Brand new white V8 M3, number plate, Dunlop. I was like that. Oh, he's arrived now. He's hit the jackpot. You hit that, don't you? I'm like you? that. Nice, nice M3, Michael. How's your CRV, he says. <laughs> Like a family vehicle. Your freaking stupid CRV <laughs> that you have to give back at the end of the year. You know what I mean? So, I'm feeling good here now. I'll, I'll, I'll have a 50 quid bet we'll find this M3 and hedge upside down before the end of the year, though. <laughs> Maybe looking to lend that CRV before it's all over? Ah, sure. It's good. I think it's good you're going to have to go and sit in the middle. In a I'm, en I'm enjoying it. I think that's, this is the reason we all like to watch you and to, uh, to hear you and to watch you race as well. This year just gets more and more, more exciting. Uh, you achieved so much last year. What, I suppose the big thing you want to do this year is get the six wins. How achievable is that with different bikes? 
yeah, it's achievable. It's just they got all stay together. You know, I mean, it's last year everyone went well. Engines lasted. Uh, I was riding not too bad myself, and everyone just sort of clicked together. And uh, to do six in a week, you know, you can't come say you got to do six in a week. If I come back and win another one, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy, you know. And uh, especially riding this big girl here, nobody knows what it's able to do. And um, I've done it for a challenge. I think, you know, nobody else was stupid enough to go off one and four TTs and go and pick a motorbike. It's never been ridden in the road again. So, uh, but it's something different, you know what I mean? And uh, it'll be all right. I'll, I'll go round round circles, but six races is a bit big ask, but I'm there to do it. And I think I'm capable of it. Do you think the BM's a bit of an unknown quantity at that kind of pace around here? Yeah, of course. Nobody's really stuck a big bike around at, at any speed at all. It, it, BMW wise, you know, they've, they've been around at 126, 7, 8. I'm not, not 100 percent sure, but you know, the actual factory hasn't been here in 75 years, so uh, I think it's going to be a big ask. But as I say, it's, you know, they're all the same. They've got wheels in an engine. They should be all right, you know. And uh, I say, if we, there's only one way to find out: is first night of practice. <laughs> so that'll be grand. John, have you took a lap this weekend or this week? Uh, yeah, I did actually. I took a lap round today with the family on the way to Jerba to the cart and then dropped back on the track and. Had a look round. Yeah, it was nice. It was uh, sun was shining and uh, a little bit of resurfacing here, there, and everywhere. So it looks like the circuit could be a little bit faster. Uh, it's very unusual. I do ride round. When I come to races, I don't bother driving round. I just, you know, get on the bike and go because I, I don't particularly like looking at some of the obstacles you can hit. <laughs> Sometimes when you when you're on the bike, you don't see them, but when you're in the car, you're like, geez, what when they hit that wall or this tree? So I just get on the bike and go. But yeah, it was a nice day today. I enjoyed it. Does it get your nerves tingling again, just having a quick look around? Yeah, I mean, I just, I love this place, you know, first time I come was, what would it be, 30 odd years ago, 32 years ago or something, when I was 10 years old, and 42 tomorrow, by the way, old man, so, it's, uh, I'm actually younger than Michael Dun uh, Rutter. I know Michael Rut Dunlop, uh, sorry, Michael Rutter looks 10 years older than me, but he's actually two, two days younger than me, he's old Rutter, so. But yeah, I'll codger tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I got the nerves jangling a little bit. You know, I got the enthusiasm back buzzing again. And uh, you know, after the injury, I felt pretty dejected for a few weeks. But coming back and uh, driving around the track, it's definitely got the old. Uh, and watching that little clip at the start, that was pretty special. So uh, it's going to be going to be great. I'm thinking that the broken wrist possibly hasn't upset your intense physical training regime <laughs> before. The the TT, and, and what I'm saying is, in that respect, you're probably, uh, or you're likely to turn up the TT with uh, a, a good mindset. It's not going to knock you back so much, is it? I, just, I, I, I don't really know, to be absolutely brutally honest. I mean, my head's completely focused on riding my bike. And, you know, I'm, in my own head, I'm going to be 100% fit and, and ready to go. But, you know, when I take the cast off and, and look at it, it looks pretty average and some funny shapes and stuff. So it's... Uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't really know. I, I, I can't. Uh, like I say, I just feel like I, if I don't, I've let everybody down. My sponsors down, everybody down. You know, but uh, like I say, going back to the, the training, you know, it, I'm, I can't stand looking at myself in the mirror in the gym. You know what I mean? I like to get out. I'm in enduro bike, motocross bike, mini bikes, and you know, the split second before I hit the the, ball, the boulder, I was out with my friends having a real good time. I was in a good world. Everything. You know, the bike's ready to go, the team's ready to go, everything, all the whole package is there and, you know, support from the family, friends, sponsors, everybody's still involved and, you know, when I hit the rock, it just my world ended completely, but uh, we'll have to, you know, I, I know my way around here, like you say, it's uh, just a case of getting the leathers on and if it's strong enough, I'll, I'll have a real good go and if it's not, I'll, I'll have to come back another year, I'll have to. Uh, someone's just put on Twitter that it's like Rocky and Apollo Creed on the sofa. <laughs> It was, it was the who? Second who, time yeah. round, ring the bell, it doesn't say, the band is awesome, they're all talking about the machines that you'd be riding. Um, one of the things on here is about, um, I know we talked about some of the goals you want to achieve this year, one of them is obviously the super sport getting faster. What's amazing, how do you find the extra speed around the, the, the course? Is it just the tiniest little measures you need to find from last year? Do you know what you need to do different this year? Yeah, there's some of the sections you just hold your eyes closed for another couple of seconds and... <laughs> <laughs> then wake up before you get in. There's just silly things, you know, you just be different things, you know, and the biggest thing about the super sport bike is it's probably the most committed bike that you'll ride around the TT at a high speed, you know. You, the super bikes, don't get me wrong, you're committed, but the 600, you're on the edge of the tyre all the time. 
you're using every inch of the road of sort of bike if you you just don't maybe use well I have a few times but sometimes you don't just go over that white line the 600 you're on the white line everywhere you're you're using your apex as you got to run through it and you got to really really hold your momentum and uh, for some reason it suits me you know uh, did you see with the front wheel locked up going into the bungalow you're talking a load of shite <laughs> cannot do there was ten, there was ten grand in that there. Thirty mile an hour. There was ten grand in that. What on the lock? Fight, on, on the, on the bonus. And Bruce was down there. He was a fucking. He was. I wouldn't <laughs> get out of bed for ten grand. What? I wouldn't get out of bed for ten grand. <laughs> that, that is true. He if I, he's got more money on his helmet <laughs> than fucking. There's no room uh, on that, baby. <laughs> the only fucking <laughs> chlamydia down there. <laughs> 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 There's a few spots on that helmet. Uh, that's that's fucking, <laughs> you've got something they, too they, desperate one, Kieran. They, they said this might happen. I'm probably gonna, not going to help things now, but this, one of the themes on Twitter is about a 132 mile an hour lap, and who's going to get it first? <laughs> that's, that's about one side. It. <laughs> that's my mum. Did you give her that 10 know. grand? <laughs> First of all, though, it must be possible. Confident you can do it? I mean, John, I know your mind's on other things at the moment, getting fit and all the rest of it, but it must be... Definitely possible, for sure. You know, I mean, I did 131.6 in the last lap of the Formula One race. I call it the Formula One race, our first superbike race. And uh, I did get held up quite a few times by, I wouldn't say slow riders, other riders on track that got, uh, you know... I, I, I couldn't can, can be out there, you know, it's not their fault, but I got, did get held up a couple of times and, and uh, you know, I was in the Joey Dunlop colours and uh, I needed to do some, something, you know, I'd, I was asleep at the start, I was like I was off to the shop to buy a paper, I was shocking on the first lap and, you know, these boys come steaming through, so I needed to do something on the last lap and I did 131.6 and I think, you know, for sure 132's on the cards and uh, I don't think uh, it will just be me doing it or Michael doing it, I think Gary will be doing it, I think he'll, James will be doing it and... I think William will be doing it. I think, you know, Hutchie will be doing it. I think there'll be quite a few boys in this room will be doing it. So it's going to be, it's going to be an incre incredible race, I'm sure. Michael doesn't know much about his bike because it's new to him. But has yours changed a great deal? You've kind of the Honda really hasn't changed a massive amount because you've had something that works underneath you. Has have they changed much this year? Uh, it's a new bike. It's a brand new machine because it's uh, they brought the new SP out, so it's got a silver frame. So, <laughs> It's got a black frame, it's got a silver frame. Uh, but it's a, it's a good solid package, you know. The, the, the actual super stock bike is a new bike and it's got a little bit more power, the SP. And, and to see what, like Hutchie did in 010, over 130 mile an hour in stock, and then what this fucking lunatic did on it in, in 2013 was just unbelievable. I mean, you know, without blowing smoke up his ass when he passed me at the end of the Kronk of Odia, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I would not have believed how fast you could actually ride a machine with a keen ignition. It was just unbelievable, you know. Uh, you know, a bike you can go to the shop and buy, and buy, you know, just incredible lap time. So, yeah, it was a new super stocker. 600s, again, same, but Clive Padgett's working around the clock, you know, with new Valvoline sponsorship. Clive's jumping through hoops, you know, and, you know, just talking to Clive the other day when they launched the bikes out, out of the last 20 starts we've had, we've had 17 podiums, two fourths and a fifth. So it's a good, strong team and a good package around us for me and Bruce. So, yeah, it's going to be gonna a few little tweaks and changes, but, you know, nothing's broken at the moment, so we can't really fix it. You know, it's still a good all round thing for us. Guys, thank you so much. I think everyone in the room around the world uh, and everyone in the race fraternity want to see you both racing each other uh, this year. So, John, get better soon, I know you'd uh, like to... John, if anybody's looking for John, he's standing down at the podium. He's been there all day waving at people, so... <laughs> I, I don't know whether that's his, his ego. I, I think when John retires, I said to Paul Phillips, I said, when John retired, we were in the pit lane yesterday and John was standing and he, he's just loving it, you know, he just, he just loves Isla Man and you just see him and he's just... Nobody there, he's just sitting waving <laughs> away and... I just thought, <laughs> he's, he's just cooling that arm down. That's what, uh, that's what I'm saying. And I think that broken wrist has done him a favour, so he can just he can put it in yes. <laughs> but you well, know, I think when he retires... That's the salute you were doing to your new, your new boss. You know what that means. I was, I was nearly... <laughs> I was nearly, <laughs> nearly going to have to grow a James Hallier when I come up here. <laughs> but, and, but John's going to sit in the podium, you know, when, it's, and, when he retires and he's going to just sit there, <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> 
<laughs> Remember me? It's me. For Sh shameless, shameless plug as well. If you look on your tables, there's some stamp collections on there. So when you do grow up and you get one or two more wins, you can have your own stamp. Yeah. <laughs>